First of all, I want to say a sincere thanks to all who made helpful suggestions on the last video. Thank you. A lot of very smart people out there who know far more about this subject than I do. I am learning fast though, so perhaps you won't have to look after me forever. Let me address one concern that came up a few times. How would this steering arm work when obviously the distance between the wheels changes as the wheels go up or down? I was just using this as a temporary prop, but you're too smart to let that go. Now I suspect there isn't a perfect solution, but what I was imagining was this, not one but two arms pivoting in the same place as the suspension arms. That way they will stay the same length, won't they? But I still need to push them sideways to turn the wheels, but that should be achievable with something which holds both of those little upright pins. Now this isn't perfect because the pushing place isn't exactly in the center of the pivot, depending on the thickness of the pivot itself and what the arms and the connectors are made from. But it does reduce the effect of the changing distance by a lot. By enough? I don't know. We'll have to build a full size model to find out. In fact, because of this very problem, I did consider changing the suspension arms. So instead of pivoting laterally across the car, they pivot longitudinally. That way the distance between them doesn't change much at all. But there are obvious complications because they'd need big cutouts to allow the wheels to steer. Hmm, so I've parked that till we can test the first version. Now, see this, this is the little box that holds both a vertical and horizontal shaft. There'll be lots of leverage on it, so it has to be rigid. But how big? I realized that I couldn't go any further on my model designing till I know what's needed in full size starting with this actual steering box. So let's make a real one with the CNC router. The mighty Rob at Extreme Plasma gave me this table a few years ago and I've used it a lot since, mostly for making my guitar machines and my pizza peels. It's really a table for a plasma cutter though, so it's not designed to take a router, even a small one like this. Everything's set up to move a plasma torch around, which doesn't really touch the material it's cutting. But routers obviously do touch. They engage with the material they're cutting, so they need much more support. Originally, I put in a simple Z-axis assembly. That's the one that goes up and down, and added an extra rail at the back of the camp tree so I could brace the carriage back to it. And it's been fine for what I've been doing, but now I want to cut thicker plywood and cut it faster. And I've been using either a two millimeter milling bit or a three millimeter one. But ideally, I'd like to be able to step up to a six millimeter bit. So I need to make my Z axis more rigid. Of course, you could spend thousands and make this perfect, but you know me, never any spare change for anything. So we all had a look Place these bits with bigger bigger bearings or just fix these ones and between us we stiffened up the assembly quite a bit this involved changing the back bearings up in size so that one is locked but the other one can be tightened against a very it. small amount if, yeah if it needs more then you have to drill the hole a bit bigger but it should be a good enough fit I think That's a lot that's better because this is it's moving everything, isn't it? It's moving so. that beam, yeah. That's good nice though, it's a lot better. And I made a new mount for the router itself. And 
and I've ordered some more linear bearings too, but they'll take a while to get here from Germany. I don't usually bother ordering anything from the UK anymore because of all the Brexit stuff. <laughs> Anyway, it's far from perfect, but let's try it. I'm using nine millimeter thick ply, complete with woodworm. Will that be thick enough? I don't know, no idea. <laughs> but we have to start somewhere. Putting this together and seeing it in real size, I decided it was bigger than necessary, so I changed the drawings and tried again and again until I got to a smaller box, which I glued up with some white glue. The final versions will be glued with epoxy resin. The mortise and tenons turned out fine, but I need to tweak the drawings for the other joints. But first, I want to test to see if it's the right size for the job that it has to do. But for that, I need to add a wheel, don't I? Yes. Now, I've spent a long time thinking about wheels, what sort, how big, how to use them. Few people have said ordinary bike wheels just wouldn't be strong enough, but they are used on trikes, so I'm not convinced. One thing's for sure though, normal bike wheels are designed to be supported on both sides of the axle. If I tried to fix the wheel on just one side, the spindle inside would just bend because it's just not strong enough. This fact has been the bane of many a young inventor for decades. So what to do? Well, we did spend a while figuring out whether we could fix larger bearings on the outside of the hubs for a thicker spindle. But 
but then I found one of the wheels had a larger diameter hub. They're all different, of course, but this particular one is wide enough to allow a 20 millimeter shaft to fit inside. I just needed to knock out the bearing cones. They came out easily from the front wheel. Of course, I wasn't filming that, but I need to do more grinding or drilling on this back one. Now a bolt would be better than this threaded bar, but I don't have one of those long enough. But still, that's a nice strong axle in there, which is very promising, isn't it? And fixing the shaft to the wheel and moving the bearings along the shaft allows other things to be added, like pulleys and sprockets and brake discs and whatever. So instead of the wheel, spinning on the shaft. Now the wheel is fixed to the shaft and the shaft itself spins in the bearings. All right then, so that's what I've got so far. Let's see how it might look in context. The top plank and the bottom plank represent the suspension arms, okay? You'll just have to imagine those because I don't have the plywood to cut those out yet. Now, the top of the box will double as the rotating surface for the steering, possibly with some lubrication in there, or thin sheets of suitable material. Any suggestions, anybody? Either that or a thrust bearing of some sort. The kingpin may well need to be tilted too, inclined even, but more on that in another video. The question is, can the box take the leverages or just fall apart? I forgot to include the steering arm. So we'll just have to improvise for now. So far so good, but what about when there's a load on? Theoretically, each spindle would need to support a quarter of the whole car plus driver, but that's not what actually happens, is it? More weight comes on the front when you brake and on the outside wheel when you go round a corner. So any idea how much weight we should expect? Let's just add some more. The box seems perfectly strong enough, but that kingpin is just too thin and needs better support. But anyway, I think that's progress on a couple of fronts. I must just find some more plywood and make some more parts. In the meantime, there's something else I want to tell you about too. So tune in next time.